beautiful morning on the north side of Indianapolis. We welcome you to the championship game of the Indy Beatball Bonanza here at North Central High School. It is the Indy Thunder taking on the Austin Blackhawks. My name is Greg Rakestraw. We are joined by Dave Benny. Thank you so much for joining us. We certainly hope you caught yesterday's broadcast and full play of Indy's victory over the New Jersey Titans. The Indy Thunder, again, a perennial powerhouse in beat baseball, taking on a very talented team from Austin. Dave, it is an absolute pleasure to be working with you. What should our listeners and viewers expect from today's championship game? It's great to be working with you as well, Greg. And the Austin Blackhawks are steeped in tradition as well. This is a team that's won nine championships in beat baseball. They won seven straight in the 90s, and they won back-to-back -back titles earlier in uh, this decade, in 2014 and 2015. And they're one of the top six uh, beat baseball teams in the country right now. And then the Indy Thunder coming off the big win yesterday over New Jersey, 15-11. to I expect to see the Thunder hit the ball a lot better today. I don't think they were happy with some of the ground balls that they hit in that game yesterday, but to New Jersey's credit, they were playing some really tight defense. I think we're going to see another good game here today. It's an earlier start, though, Greg, which means the grass is wet, and so you tell the defense two hands on the ball and be careful with it. We'll have to see how the, uh, how the footing and how the handling of the ball is today with the wet grass. We didn't have that in our third game yesterday. Our pregame show is presented by Opti Park. Looking for a place to hold your next event or get together? Come to Opti Park, located in the heart of Broad Ripple. Opti Park is the home to baseball, birthday parties, family reunions, and playground fun. Opti Park is a community park, not a city park, and run by volunteers for over 60 years. Check out our calendar of events at OptiParkIndy.com. Contact us to make a reservation or make a donation to help keep the park open to everyone. OptiParkIndy.com, provided by the Optimus Club of the north side of Indianapolis, proud sponsor of the Indy Thunder. We're still about five or six minutes away from the first pitch of today's game, and knowing that we have as the captain's meeting is uh, taking place as we speak at home plate. And knowing we've got some viewers that are seeing this sport for the first time, we tried to put all the rule changes you need to know from baseball or softball to beatball to explain exactly uh, the, the differences that we have playing this game for the blind and visually impaired. So some of the rules changes uh, that, will, uh, that, that fans need to know about. Six inning game. And I know that um, instead of having balls and strikes on our count, we have strikes and passes, correct? That's correct. You're allowed to take one pitch in this uh, sport, a passed ball, and instead of three strikes, you get four strikes. And so usually in this sport, you will see the strike, to <coughs> excuse me, strike total listed first, and then the passed ball. There are two bases, first and third. We can talk about hits, but really it's either a run or an out. And again, it is simply a race. Can the batter get to the pylon, the base, or can the fielders get to the ball in time? And that's really what it is. It's a race to the ball, it's a race to the bag, and you, you're running 100 feet. You're running 100 feet down the baseline, and the fielders are trying to close in on this sphere that is making emitting sound, and we are totally playing this sport by ear. Catcher and pitcher are on the batter's team. Tell us about that. So think coach pitch. The batter and the pitcher have a symbiotic relationship. The pitcher's job is to say a, a series of commands, something like set, ready, pitch, and use the same cadence for consistency's sake. Put the ball on the same spot where he knows uh, over the plate and height where he knows his batter is going to swing. And then the hitter, while wearing a blindfold, needs to keep his sing swing consistent, keep his timing consistent, and try to put that ball over 40 feet uh, from home plate so that it is in fair play, and then get down to one of two bases that will turn on randomly. So there are also two spotters out in the field from a defensive standpoint. They're there to assist the fielders. Tell us about that, Dave. Now your field spotters, most teams go with two. The one will be on each side of the field, one on the right field side, one on the left field spot side, and their job is to call one number when the ball is hit. They can only call one, and only one spotter can call the number, indicating a zone on the field where the ball is uh, is headed to give the players their first indication of where the ball is going. And then they're also responsible for 
realigning the defense after each play because the players are blindfolded. So they need a little bit of assistance getting back into position. And again, all players will wear a blindfold in the field, correct? And yes, and that's because there are different levels of visual impairment. Some people, uh, such as myself, can only see light and dark. Some people can only see dark. They don't see anything else. Uh, and others have a little bit of, they may be, be able to see shapes or, uh, or some, you know, some things that are blurry. So to keep a level playing field, everybody is required to wear a blindfold. You every will, player. You will see two different lines on the field, kind of from an arc standpoint, like you would almost infield, outfield, fence, etc. There is a 40-foot line that constitutes the infield. The ball must go past that in fair territory for it to count as a hit. If not, then it is a foul ball. And we had this happen three times yesterday. If the ball, not on a bounce or a roll, but on the fly, clears the 170-foot mark in fair territory, that is a home run, and it counts as two runs. And Dave, you said yesterday having three of those in one day, that doesn't happen very often. It's incredible. I've maybe seen half a dozen witnessed live in my 20-year uh, career until yesterday, and I don't know what got into folks, but we had three of them from three different uh, fields, three different teams. Corey White hit one in our game yesterday uh, for the Thunder against New Jersey. Justin Holland from Atlanta did it against Chicago. And Aaron C., second-year player from the Indy Edge, did it. Well, with that, Darnell Booker is getting ready to fire up his troops. we got to get a timeout. I hope he's still bouncing when we come back. We're back in 60 seconds. First pitch of this Beatball Bonanza Championship comes your way next here on the ISC Sports Network. When a visit to the eye doctor ends in a diagnosis of blindness or visual impairment, Bosma Enterprises is there, providing low and high-tech tools that let adult Hoosiers keep living at home, and training that teaches people with vision loss how to cook meals, travel around their homes and towns, and continue their employment. Because the need for independence never fades, even when the sense of sight does. Bosma Enterprises. To give help or get help, visit bosma.org. The firing up process is continuing for the Indy Thunder. I told Darnell Booker yesterday, a friend of mine for really over 20 years at this point, I said, I knew you were the head coach. I didn't know you were the hype man. Uh, this is a team that is getting fired up before they take the field to play. And Dave, again, for those that are maybe seeing this sport for the first time or have heard about it but not familiar with the teams, the Indy Thunder have turned into a true dynasty in the sport. And I mentioned this yesterday on our broadcast. There are many who have been around beat baseball for a long time that will tell you that the Indy Thunder could compete with any team in any era. They play a relentless form of beat baseball when it comes to hitting, fielding, base running. They really know weaknesses up and down the lineup or across the field on defense. And the Indy Thunder over the past five seasons now with the three wins yesterday uh, have a total record of 102 wins with only four losses. And really, only two of those losses were with a full squad. It's just been amazing the one they've been on since 2016. And it all a better roses for Darnell Booker. He formed this team in 2000, and until 2016, uh, when they picked up their all their young recruits, they had never, the Thunder never finished higher than six. There are eight teams that took part in this weekend's event here at North Central High School. The Chicago Comets, the Indy Edge, the Indy Thunder, the New Jersey Titans, the Gateway Archers, the Cleveland Scrappers, Austin Blackhawks, and the Atlanta Chaos. Everybody got to play three pool play games yesterday, and simultaneously, while this game is taking place, there are games taking place at three other fields. So it's one Sunday morning game. To travel outside of Indy to go home, and the day those teams are allowed to do just that. Let's thank our wonderful ISC Sports Network crew uh, that had an early call time. First of all, you have a chance to see us, Greg Rakestraw and Dave Benny. Many thanks to Jordan Shue, Eldon Wheeler, Rob Lynch, Aaron Van Wolde, and Kevin Ratterman that are making sure our signal gets to you here this morning. Dave, final thoughts before we have this uh, first pitch of this championship game. I'm going to be interested to see. You've got a matchup of two of the best pitchers 
in all of beat baseball over the last 15 years, Jared Woodard and Tim Hebner. They've faced each other in championship games bef uh, when the, before Jared got to the Thunder and before uh, Tim Hebner started pitching for Austin. So they've known each other for a long time and they've faced each other in a lot of high profile games. It should be a good one. So the coin toss decides who is the home team, who is the visiting team. Well, it looks like the Indy Thunder are going to be the team that uh, will be the visiting team. And again, you kind of have to fight instincts if you're used to seeing baseball or softball because you see the Thunder pitcher and catcher go out there well, because they are pitching for the team that is batting. So leading things off will be Eric Rodriguez for the Indy Thunder. Eric Rodriguez is probably a consensus uh best player all around in beat baseball right now. He does it on both sides of the field. First pitch swinging, that'll be a foul ball. So again, as you look at the bottom right-hand corner, for those of you that are relying on your eyes for this broadcast, strikes, pass is what you see, not balls and strikes. So first strike on a foul ball. Swing and a miss for strike number two. Now, a lot of times they'll take a pitch here. Jared will tell them to take their pass ball if they have two clean, uh, clean swings and misses. Makes great contact towards the third base side. Sprinting towards the pylon, and I think we unfortunately might be had a bit of an injured player that time in trying to dive for the ball, so there was never a successful grab. The player that is injured, it appears, is Darius Sterling. That's not good. And this is an Austin team that does not exactly have a deep lineup for today's game either. No, they're shorthanded anyway, and they had a couple of things because they had other responsibilities. Is and out there shut down infielders, so you hope he's all right. Meanwhile, it looks like Eric, if, was that a fair ball? That was a fair ball, looks absolutely. Looks like he had a good start for the Thunder, and I'm, I'm 0 for 1 at uh, making predictions because I thought he might take that third pitch, and instead he put it in play and scored one nothing Indy. Well, Rodriguez is back up at the plate. Oh, so I guess not. I'm not sure if they decided just to... So the ball, again, it was an absolute rope that was hit again from a baseball perspective. Will be kind of to the shortstop area of the field. I'm not sure if there was an issue with. I wonder if it was a dead ball, Greg. I wonder if, it, if they if the sound if the ball stops beeping during a play because it's hit uh, and it malfunctions, they will play that. That's an equipment. Album. That's the only thing I can think of because again, he may have <laughs> he hit it on an absolute rope, and hence because the player couldn't hear it, hit him on the chest. Understand that. So, wipe away that run for the Thunder as Rodriguez goes back to the plate. Woodard on the pitch. Swing and a miss. So the count does not start over, though. If that was a dead ball, which it looks like what it was, then that, that would have been the third strike of the end. But he's still at the plate, so. And there he goes, running towards the third base side. Foul ball. Just to the left of the foul fair line. And Greg, it's important to remember that in beat baseball, the baselines are 10 feet off of the foul lines, and they do that for safety sure. and precautionary reasons. <laughs> Assistance being provided by Braden Rodriguez. Serves as both the spotter and the catcher for the Indy Thunder. Yeah, he's a backup uh, spotter, but he's their starting catcher now that uh, Jared's longtime catcher, Avery Hunsaker, uh, recently got married, and he's going to take the year off. So Braden's stepping in. Pitcher is ready. Swing and a miss for Rodriguez, and that is the end of the at-bat. So first out of the inning, and just unfortunate for Rodriguez because, again, he tattooed that ball in fair territory, but a bit of an equipment malfunction apparently, and... One away for the Thunder. Yeah, that's a bad break, but it, it happens. And now it's Corian White who will try to pick him up. Here we go. Wait, you see the speed this kid has. One of the absolute fastest base runners in the sport. Him and his brother. Swing and a miss by White. 
Corian, the younger of the two White brothers. He's played three World Series and has three championships. Foul ball as he sprayed that one down the right field line. Pretty good way to start a career, though, Greg. Three World Series and three World Championships. And because that ball was hit, just nestled up to our cameraman Eldon Wheeler down the first base side. Had a great look at that beat ball from a size perspective. Two strikes. Ground ball towards the left side. It will be in fair territory. Race for the pylon, and that's a run. He's safe. Now when the ball's on the ground like that, those are the plays that need to be made in a game like this. If Austin, which is a prohibitive underdog in this game, is going to stay with the Thunder, they're going to hit enough balls in the air that you just can't do anything about. But when a ball's on the ground, they're going to have to pick those up if they want to stay in this. Ground ball down the third baseline that Orion White scores on. So one nothing. Now this is Kyle Lewis that will step to the plate. The one lefty in the lineup. And Lewis skies this one in the air in fair territory. And this one will now nestle right on the line, and it's going to be a foul ball. A lucky break for the Austin Blackhawks. Again, the line that you see, the umpire walked by to go pick up that ball. It was just past the 40-foot line and literally bounced and rolled into foul territory by maybe an inch or two. You see what I mean, though? He put plenty of air under that ball, and so he got a head start to the base before it even hit the ground. And you're right, if that had stayed in fair territory, that would have been trouble for the Blackhawks. In baseball, we refer to those as a, a duck snort, a blooper, a Texas leaguer. Here we call it a coffin corner because <laughs> it's right in that 40-foot and that baseline area. A perfect description. Pat McAfee would approve of that description. If there was a such thing as a beat baseball bunt, that would be it. The first strike on Lewis. Because remember that the ball has to go 40 feet to be a fair ball in this sport. It, you can't just drop it down right in front of home plate. So we're going to miss by Lewis two strikes. Again, another swing by Lewis. Down to a final strike. Has one pass remaining. World Series stats from two years ago. Lewis is swing and again skies it, but this one will be in foul territory. And Lewis was the uh, top batting average at the World Series in 2019. He won the, uh, the batting championship. All he did was come off the bench and go, I believe he was 17 for 21 at that World Series. Filling in first for Corey White and then for Tyler Rodriguez. Lewis swings. Ground ball up the middle. Lewis, for some reason, a bit of a hesitation in terms of running towards the bag. And with that, ball is snagged by one of the fielders for the Austin Blackhawks. That's Brandon Chesser that makes the play. That's their captain, number 30, and, uh, and Chesser solid. He was a part of those championship teams back uh, six, five, six years ago. And Kyle, you don't know, he may have slipped out of the box or he may have just not heard right away which base came on. They come on randomly, and it's it's that misses on the, the player to listen and to know whether third or first has come on. And he hesitated out of the box just a little bit. Well, they are bringing him back to home plate, so I think there must have been another potential malfunction now, there. Now, what that could have been was a late base. Yep. That could have been a late base, and if you have to call it, that's not umpire. If you call the late, if the player hears it go off late, he can say late base, he still has to run it out, and then it's umpire's discretion. I can tell you, when I was a player, I was uh, I had a reputation for sometimes calling bases that weren't late if I hit a little ground ball, <laughs> just hoping they would give it to me. And that ground ball, race to it. Okay. I believe it was grabbed before Lewis got to the bases. <laughs> it was an exasperated dive. That is Sterling that was able to make the play. Sterling looking good early. He knocked down the one that ended up being a redo, and now he makes the play. Oh, but the ump called him safe. Look at this, Greg. It was close. Okay, so each team has caught a little bit of a break here. This time the break favored the Thunder on the close play, and, um, and Eric Rodriguez had to do his own. 
So we're even see Steven on that. But that's two runs on the board. So three batters, two runs scored. Now here's Corey White. Corey White will be up next. He had a home run again yesterday. You know, both of Corey White's home runs have come right here. He hit one two years ago in the championship game against San Antonio. And then he hit, uh, he hit one yesterday, too. Swing and a miss. And the discussion that was going on yesterday, we thought the discussion was whether or not it had made it over the line. The ball was dead in addition to being a home run, so they had to go to the rule book to see if it was a dead ball or counted as a home run. In that situation, it counts as a home run. Foul ball, two strike count. This kid's got maybe the best combination of power and speed in our in the country. And this one tattooed down the third base side. And this will be a run for the Thunder. That was earned. That was a legitimate shot. I could hear the crack of the bat in my headset. That was hit so hard. And boy, Corey, that combination of power and speed is just deadly. That ball cleared the 170-foot line again. It did not do so on the fly. Take a look. They get an absolute rope that was hit by White. Would have been a two-bagger against the wall in a baseball perspective. Here it counts as a run, and it's now 3-0 as Ed Brown comes to the plate. Boy, he turned on that, didn't he? He just got the head of the bat out and just pulled it right up. Rip. Now Ed Brown, he's the one of the elder statesmen on the team. Top of that one foul. First strike. Rodriguez struck out to lead off the inning, but three consecutive runs. This ground ball will not reach the 40-foot line. Or does it? Yes, it did. And he's safe. And Brown able to dive for the bag before the Austin fielder in terms of Darius Sterling was able to get to it. And Sterling's got to know. Now, see, here's the thing. They're used to playing in Texas. In the fields with your, with that clay and the grass, it's just different. It, they run a lot faster. Darius, if he, you know, the Midwest players know that the ground, wet grass is going to suck that ball up. And when he hears the spotter drag the call, which means hold on to it for a few extra, a little longer, like three, he knows he's got to be moving. And he needed to charge that ball. If the line is 40 feet, that ball went about 42. Just nestled down in the wet morning grass past the infield line. So four runs in the top of the first here for the Thunder. Tyler Rodriguez now at the plate. The younger brother of Eric. Alec, Eric, Tyler, all on the roster. Braden serves as the spotter and catcher. And then Lisa, their mother, is a starting field spotter on the left field side. I don't know if she'll start today. She was deal dealing with a little shoulder issue. She hurt her shoulder in a non-beat ball related uh, deal. And, uh, and she did spot yesterday, though. We'll just have to see. We know Mariah will be spotting on the right field side, as she's done for the Thunder for the last 11 years. Tyler Rodriguez swings and misses. Tyler's a great sixth batter. He's just, he's all contact. He rarely strikes out. Swing and a miss down to strike number three. And again, it's four. There's the pass. You see when they take a pass ball, they, they slap their thigh in rhythm with the pitch to let Jared know that they've got the timing down. Contact required here. That was a trick learned from Taiwan. Sky high pop up that again. Out is called. Is that Darius? That is correct. So Sterling got that one, and they needed that put out, Greg, because they're four runs in, and that was their first put out of the game. The other out was on a strikeout, so maybe that'll get their defense uh, back up and uh, and moving here a little bit as back to the top of the order. That snaps a streak of four consecutive batters to reach and score for the Thunder. And we look at Molly Fleming assisting. Darius to put him back in position. 
And she is coaching for the Blackhawks this weekend because her other half, uh, their, or, their ordinary coach, uh, Jono, they call him, Jonathan Fleming, couldn't make it. So Molly's got head coaching responsibilities. Great to see our friend Andy Elkins here today. He is the athletic director at North Central High School, checking to make sure from a facility standpoint everything is in tip-top shape, and it is for this beat ball bonanza. Rodriguez, ground ball up the middle. Sprint to the base. Fielder gets his hands on it. That's an out. Out number three. That's tremendous job from a fielding perspective for Brandon Chester. So we go to the bottom half of the first. The Thunder have scored four. The Blackhawks come to bat as you're watching this championship game of the Indy Beat Baseball Bonanza on the ISC Sports Network. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind, and we read NFB Newsline. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network is presented by Kane and Abel. Orientation Mobility Services. Take a person's arm and they will lead you around the block. Give a person a cane and it will lead you around the world. 317-213-7031. The phone number, rb15 at iQuest.net is the email. Greg Rakestraw, Dave Benning, you on the ISC Sports Network. Let's bring you the batting lineup now for the Austin Blackhawks. Brandon Chesser will bat leadoff. Michael Finn bats second. Steve Perrier bats third. Mariano Reynoso will bat fourth. Edwin Manning is your fifth batter. Darius Sterling is your sixth batter. Mario Contrera is the catcher. And Timothy Hibner is the pitcher. What can you tell us about this Blackhawks lineup, Dave? So they're not a deep roster, but the what they did bring is most of their key players. So you're going to see it right away with the with the two veterans at the top of the list, Brandon Chesser and Mike Finn. Both have been all stars in the league. Mike Finn is now in the Hall of Fame. So there is some potency uh, to this Austin lineup, and Tim Hibner will put it on the bat. Tim Hibner is has won several pitcher catcher awards over the years as the top pitcher in the league, and he was part of a dynasty two team too with the west coast dogs way back uh, 2008 to 2011 he won four straight titles as their pitcher so uh they're going to put the ball in play swing and a miss from chesser brandon chesser has some of his equipment in the hall of fame in cooperstown that's a story maybe we can get to later on this game if we have time chesser ground ball towards the left side Fielder traps it, catches it easily, that's an out. Looks like Eric Rodriguez. Was that number seven there that picked that one up? And if you roll a ball to Eric Rodriguez, you're going to be out. This is the part where I point out, again, for those that are relying on their eyes that are not familiar with the community like Dave is, folks, Dave is blind. <laughs> so he is calling this from, from sound and from simple knowledge of the teams. You amazed me a day ago watching, and you're doing so now with being here in person with you. Hey, we do a lot of Facebook Live so that people at home can watch live streams of these games, and I've been known to do blind play-by-play. -play. Uh, <laughs> I love it. This is the water I used to swim in, and I've got a day job, too, that is not this, and so this is, this is great. Michael Finn at the plate, swings and misses. Michael Finn was a part of that West Coast Dogs team that I was talking about. Hibner won four titles with and he brought him to Austin with him when he left the uh, dogs. And well, the dogs went out on top. They disbanded after four straight titles. Now two swings and misses. The three strikes, again, Hibner, as advertised, working quickly. Closed stance by Finn. Swing and a miss. So unfortunately, a strikeout for the Blackhawks, and there's two down. And that's not what you want. Mike Finn is one of the better contact hitters. You cannot give the Indy Thunder free outs. Uh, you can't steal first or third base, so you have to put it in play in this sport. And uh, that was a difference in the game yesterday. I think Derek and I thought the main difference was that New Jersey just had a few more strikeouts and in really key situations where they were mounting a rally. There's Steve Perrier. Perrier's been around for a few years. Uh, he's been a starter and he's been a, a sub at some point, but uh, he's a decent hitter. 
Seeming to have a little bit of a delay. Looking down the first base line. They made their, I think they're fixing that base over there on yep. the first base line. Sometimes when the uh, fielder or when the uh, runner crashes into the base, he will, uh, he will loosen a the cord. These are hardwired. We're working on wireless bases, but right now they're hardwired, so sometimes we'll, the cord will come loose. Problem has been rectified, so per year is ready. Hipner is two, and again, very close stance. Ball popped up, left side. One bounce, second bounce, dive for the ball, and should be, I believe, a diving effort by Perrier. That's a close play. That is Rodriguez that made the play again. They need to find somebody else to hit to. And Rodriguez walking that ball back towards the dugout. Inning is over. Thunder come to bat when we come back as you're watching this Beat Ball Bonanza Championship game here on the ISC Sports Network. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to cook meals safely. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to continue their employment. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. The best video on the internet is not the guy of the last week or so, it's the surfing bulldog. Expecto Patronum, like, you know, Harry Potter. Everybody knows what I'm talking about at home. I'm not Confused. 12. You are one of the most disgusting people. You ask. You open up the door. <laughs> Squeaky. Colts quarterback room is kind of like picking your favorite Ernest movie. They're all pretty bad. You have did to. You, did you actually see any of those? You have to go. I, I really was a big Ernest. Yeah. <laughs> no was a big way. Ernest, yeah. Ernest Goes to Camp was my favorite. Corian White at the plate. Two, three, and four this time up for the Thunder. Top of the second. And the Blackhawks need to try to get some. Some outs here. They don't want to lose contact with the Thunder. Down Just getting fielders set here is the momentary reason for the delay. Here we go. Patience, please. Edward took a warm up toss or two. Now our umpire is running. Orion White, one of the four runners that scored. Brown ball left side, well hit. Race for the base. Diving fielder. Effort got his hands on it just in time. That's an out. It's a good play. On the left left field side over there. So one down. In well struck ball. Great job to corral that. Here we go. Pick that up. That was Sterling again. First time that Corian White has been retired. Here you see Kyle Lewis, who had a lengthy at bat. This time, not so much. Ground ball towards the right side. Lewis hustling, but ball is claimed by the Blackhawks. Well, that's two back to back putouts for the Blackhawks, and this is what they needed to do to stay in this game. That is Jamie Simpson was able to snag it. And Jamie can play some defense at Jamie's, uh, Jason, Jamie's husband, Wayne Simpson, is one of the all-time greats in beat baseball through the 80s and the 90s and even into the, the, the first part of the turn of the century. And now he doesn't play so much anymore, but Jamie picked up the game and now she's playing a little bit out there, got the start in this game. Holly Whittier assisting in the field for the Austin Blackhawks. Holly came, Kenny did not. Kenny, her better, her other half. She's the better half, obviously. <laughs> and I'll bet you Kenny's watching this, too. I know he was watching some of the ball yesterday. He is the ordinary catcher. Swing and a miss by Corey White. Four nothing Thunder, top of the second. The Indy Thunder, the host team, but on the coin flip there, the visiting team this morning. I think Corvey's perfect at the plate for this tournament. He hasn't had a lot of at bats. Skies this one down the left field side. One bounce, bounces by a fielder. Diving effort, that's a run. Yeah, I get one chance with Corey White. 
flying down the line, running towards that third base bag, and it's two for two in terms of runs scored for Corey White. So he runs, he gets to the base on a good base run. If he runs a straight base and gets out of the box, he gets there in five seconds flat, maybe just a little less. So that's how much time that defense has to try to get that ball off the ground in control and away from their body. It, it's just very difficult. And that's why I think Corey's maybe eight for eight now in this tournament. I don't think they've put him out yet. Here's Ed Brown. He scored a run. Brown ball up the middle, it's where his swing is this time. Fielder diving and will have it easily in is over. Great diving effort that time by Darius Sterling. So we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Thunder do score one, their lead grows to five nothing. As you're watching this indie beat ball bonanza on the ISC Sports Network. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network with the Thunder leading the Blackhawks here in this championship game of the Beatball Bonanza. Presented in part by Bright Ideas Consulting. Your logo on everything under the sun. They're located at 7425 Westfield Boulevard. They've been a part of the community since 1983. One more time, thank you so much, Jordan Shu, Kevin Ratterman. Thank you to Eldon Wheeler, Aaron Van Woldy, and Rob Lynch. It's an early crew call on a Sunday morning, but Given today's forecast of rain later and uh, just overall muggy conditions, being here at about 8.30 is about the right time to be here on a Sunday morning. Greg Rakestraw, Dave Benny with you on the ISC Sports Network. Thank you so much to Darnell Booker and everyone involved for this tournament for having us back here to broadcast this championship match. We were here two years ago. Obviously, things were a bit different in 2020. There was a limited schedule that was played during the pandemic last year, but... Right, and it's great to be back here at this wonderful event. That's true. The Thunder played 10 games in 2020. There was an eight-team event here and then a four-team event on 9-11 weekend down in Green, uh, Greenwood, Indiana. And uh, and the Thunder were 10-0 and last year and really they didn't have a game as competitive as yesterday's third game that we saw with New Jersey all of last year. They pretty much dominated and ran right through that. The competition. I think we have a little bit of a, a lineup change that's coming here for the Austin Blackhawks, hence the momentary delay. And again, you see that is the scores table that is right behind home plate. We are located to soundproof us to not serve as a distraction to the players in the field who are obviously relying on their ears. You see us here with this beautiful backdrop. We're actually behind a building that is behind home plate. So we are probably, oh, I would say 75, 80, 100 feet away from home plate. We're calling all the activity off a monitor to again, that's the building that we are behind, to show you just, again, we're trying to do our part to cover this, but also not serve as a distraction to the players at home plate of the field. Well, Greg's calling it off a monitor. I'm just trusting Greg, and I'm <laughs> calling it off of him. That's your first mistake, is you're trusting me. <laughs> You'll know better over the years. <laughs> Great look at Eric Rodriguez. Is this Mariano Reynoso leading off? It is Reynoso spot in the lineup, correct? So Reynoso is an interesting story. He's from Argentina uh, originally, and one of the things the Austin Blackhawks do and have done for many years is uh, travel internationally to bring beat baseball to other countries. And so in 2019, right before the uh, pandemic, coincidentally, thank God, uh, it was before they went down in the fall of 2019, a bunch of uh, the Blackhawks down to Buenos Aires, and uh, and taught the uh, some Argentinians how to play beat baseball, and then they taught the Blackhawks blind soccer, which is of course big down in that part of the world. The lineup change is continuing here, and again, it's, there's not much from a lineup change that Austin can do because again. They do have a very limited number of players. We believe eight players in uniform for today's game. 
Oh yes, I count eight and and perhaps nine, but I, I know there's a there's kind of an injury issue going Fire. on. So we'll see. Are we aware of what the lineup change was? We'll find out because it's Reynoso who is ready at the plate now. I didn't think they would take Reynoso out. He's one of their big sticks. And this one elevated, skied, and this will turn foul. They would not have cleared the three foot barrier regardless, but lands in foul territory. First strike to Reynoso. And we are seeing this is the third consecutive hitter that, from a timing standpoint, has a very close stance, Dave, where they turn in that left shoulder, almost putting their back completely towards the pitcher. And you wonder if they're, if that's something that Tim Hibner's worked on, uh, either for this game or this season, to try to get them to hit down the, down the line and try to get the ball away from the middle a little bit. I mean, it seems to me you would pull the ball if you did Swing and a miss. The other thing that is notable with the catcher in Contreras, it's very much a higher target than we're seeing from the catcher in Rodriguez for the Indy Thunder. Target's about chest high for Ray Nosso and elevates this one, but turns it foul and three strikes. And again, we're going to play with a fourth strike. Yes, that is that, was, that has been the rule since I... Uh, came into the league back in 1999. There is a proposal to drop that fourth strike that this game has come along now and advanced to the point where we can go to with three strikes like traditional baseball. Reynoso still has his pass he can use. That rule has not passed yet, but it, it, is, in, it is on the table. Line drive up the middle, splitting two fielders, diving effort, still being scrambled for safe. They just hit it too hard, and there you go. That's Mariano's game. Whack it, get to the base, and he did it there, and they're on the board. No effort by the fielder. Tyler Rodriguez. Take a look. Two fielders. See, and, even, and that was hit hard enough that even with the wet grass, and the field conditions, it's still scooted right through there to the back line. The first one of the game for the Blackhawks. And here's Greg Roberts hitting in Manning's spots. So there's the first change. Roberts swing and a miss. And very low hands for Roberts on that swing. Almost putting those hands almost below the waistline. Dipping that bat head, trying to time it out. Next pitch. This one sent foul. Two strikes. Here we go, team. Greg Roberts uh, came to the Blackhawks from Houston a few years back. Before then, he was with the Houston team called the Bayou City Heat. Kind of a traditional powerhouse as well down in the state of Texas. We'll be seeing all three Texas powers next weekend in the suburbs of Chicago. Roberts in the right center field gets by both fielders. Diving ever to get it, but Roberts is there. It was Corey White, the fielder that was closest to it, but back-to-back -back runs for the Blackhawks. Yeah, back-to-back -back runs to start the inning, so here comes Austin now. And now you've got a little bit of speed coming up with uh, if this is Darius. This is his spot in the lineup coming up, the sixth spot. And Sterling that is at the plate. The productive home half of the inning. The visitors from Austin. Darius Sterling got the walk off in extra innings in the third game that got them here today. The Blackhawks went into the third game yesterday on the other side of the bracket, the opposite side of the Thunder, 2-0, and and they played the Indy Edge, the other Indy team. Went to extras, and Darius won it in the bottom of the seven. No out, bottom of the two. There were a bunch of walk offs too yesterday. I think I counted three of those. A couple extra inning games oh. yesterday was a wild day. Sterling swings and sends that one foul. First strike. How much of a bat on a first swing or two is just trying to figure out the timing of the swing? It shouldn't be if you've worked a lot with your pitcher in practice. You should be up there ready to hit. You, you Ideally, if you want to run a high-tempo offense, you want to put the first or second pitch in play to keep that defense moving. Ground ball. Just stops, I think, just shy of the 40-foot mark. There's it on the line. There's cheering going on, yeah. so I think that Must that was a fair ball. I think they're going to call it an out. 
And was that Eric that got up to that 40 foot line that again? That's correct. That's a tough man because Darius has some speed, so that's a foot race between two of the best in the, best in the game. And, and Eric gunned him that time. Darius might return the favor. If Eric gives him a chance, though. They're both excellent, excellent infielders. Here's Chesser. He's an out the first time up. So Brandon Chesser, I, I told you that the Austin Blackhawks like to do a lot of international outreach. And back in 2015, they went to the Dominican Republic. Brandon Chesser and a lot of them met Pedro Martinez down there, a couple of others. And there is a blindfold in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown that both Brandon Chesser and Pedro Martinez once wore. Hey, that is it, it a Sliding effort by Chesser. Did he make that? No, I think the Thunder, did the Thunder put him out there? He sent it down the right field line. On a sliding effort. I don't know if the fielder was able to make the grab in time or whether Chester was able to hit the bag. And the ball landed in fair territory and then passed the floating past the bag. It was in play. He was safe. Safe, he's in there. So just like, yeah, just like traditional baseball, it goes we go. if it stays in the fair t uh, fair uh, play past the base and then curves foul that's still fair ball correct that's a good beat ball hit that's a hard play to make here's michael hey. finn who struck out last time and and misses at this opportunity so look they've got three in now and only one out this is a nice little rally going for the blackhawks swinging a miss as well right here guys right here been looking to make contact for the first time today. Been struggling this tournament off Tim hey. Hibner, and that's surprising because they've been together so long. Line drive down the left field side. Slide, the fielder slides past it and couldn't get it to it in time. That's in the run. That's now I'm 0 for 2, so he proves wrong again. I just said that they were having a little bit of struggle, and he got a nice side hit to pulled it to the left side. It's good. <laughs> With the giddy up to get back to the dugout because he recognizes he had been struggling as well. To make it four runs on five batters for the Blackhawks here in the bottom of the second. You know, that wet grass, Lewis trying to slide and dive for it, just slid right past it. Steve Perrier. And all of a sudden, look at this, they got the tying run up at the play. Blackhawks have already batted around here in the bottom half of the inning, which is easy to do in a six player game. Blackhawks retired in order in the home half of the first. Second strike. So Tim's right there, though. I think there's maybe contact on this next one. Tim doesn't strike out, man. He's had perfect Ball. games at the World Series. There's the pass. And by perfect game for right. a pitcher in this sport, that means no strikeouts. Ready. On the pitch. Hey. Popped up. This will be in play. Race for the pylon and the ball, and that's an out, Rodriguez. Give it a crowd for a player to dive for the base. Two away. Second time Perrier has been retired as an out. The Reynoso will bat for a second time this inning. You see assistance provided by Lisa Gilchrist in the field for the Thunder. Even with one good arm, she's out there helping the team. And she has been a spotter since 2008, I believe, was her first year when uh, when the Rodriguez's were still just young little whippersnappers, too young to even play ball. We were working with those kids in their backyard. <laughs> this one hit down the third base line. This was in fair territory. Fielders getting in position and able to grab it just in time. I believe that should be out number three to end the inning, and it will be. So a few more years. A few years ago, Mariano makes that uh, base. Seven batters come to the plate for the Blackhawks. Four able to score. Thunder lead by one as we go to the top of the third here at the Beat Ball Bonanza in Indy. You're watching on the ISC Sports Network.
The drive, the take, foul, and it goes! Lobbing it to the back of the end zone. They're going to say it's a touchdown! Left foot, gets through. Goal for Vargas. Hamilton will score! Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to keep living at home. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to travel around their homes and towns. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Tyler Rodriguez to start things off, the number six hitter. This marks the second trip through the lineup for the Indy Thunder. And let's draw Dave Benny with you on the ISC Sports Network championship game of this Beat Ball Bonanza event. My Thunder Bats really have not gotten going yet. Now the Blackhawks put up four in that last inning. And here we are. We're in, a, we're in a tight one here so far. A lot of, a lot of ball left to be played. I think Jared and the Thunder would like to see more balls in the air and more balls to the back row of the Austin defense. Richard and Wooded is ready, delivers towards home. Ground ball left side, running towards the third base bag. Bobbled by the fielder, but then snagged in time. That's Sterling, and that's one away. Just not going to get away with the ground balls in this game. And Austin's 3-0 and for a reason. At the top of the lineup, and Eric Rodriguez rolls through. This is about the time when Eric does something crazy to, to uh, ignite his team. You know, get a nice high fly ball, one of his hard line drives, and really get the rest of the guys fired up. There's a reason he's the leadoff hitter. He's their catalyst. Eric has been fantastic in the field. Really has led the team in put out so far in this game. But is over to at the plate. Got a strike out. And out in the second as well. First pitch foul. First strike of the at bat. This one sent towards the left side. That's a good diving effort is made. Fielder is couldn't get in his hands in time, and that's going to be a run. That's a solid hit. And that ball was hit to the left side. It was a little, it hit a little harder than the last one, and so instead of being able to corral it, that got by the first man. And Eric's a lot of speed. Greg Roberts was the fielder that was closest to it, but just could never get a grasp on it. Darius Sterling made a diving effort for it, but could not track it down in time. One out, one run here in the top of the third inning. Just had that ball unfortunately kick off his foot. Or off the timing of the effort by Roberts. And it's difficult. The idea is to get center mass on the ball if you can when you dive for it to get the biggest part of your of your form onto the ball, but you're doing it all by ear. So if you're a few inches off instead of instead of taking a chest, you might take it in a in a thigh or something or a foot and it bounces bounces away. Corey and White with two quick swings and two quick misses. Two strikes. He scored a run back in the first. Recorded as an out in his last plate appearance. Jared's trying to pitch fast and get that high tempo offense in motion, but they just haven't hit enough first and second pitches today. Now they were yesterday. Corian White putting his bat on the plate to again align himself to know he's able to hit that outside corner. Takes his pass there. Just to try to, again, gain a sense of where the pitch is going to be located. And now it's on Woodard to replicate exactly where that last pitch, last pitch was. Jiggle the cord, maybe the connection. Turn it on, leave it on. It's Make sure on. Okay. cord is plugged in properly for our base at first. And, and teams yeah, take handle pass balls differently some teams don't even allow you i know uh, my pitcher my old pitcher back in san antonio kevin simpson uh, he wouldn't let you take a, a pass ball if you took a pass ball at him next one might be in your rib cage <laughs> because his philosophy was it might be the best one you get why would you take it and we're 
doing an equipment check on the base at first. That's the reason for the momentary delay. Now, when, when the Thunder batters take pitches, it's usually because Jared will tell them to. They'll say, listen to this one or something like that. If he sees something that looks a little bit off to him, uh, you haven't seen, I don't think you, we've seen a Blackhawk take a pitch yet off Tim Hitler. They generally don't do it either. That's a Texas thing, man. They don't take pitches very often in Texas. Now back to action. Swing and miss. And that's the bat for White. The strikeout. There's two down. And things getting interesting because the Thunder are not getting that separation that they like to get, that they usually get. They've had only a smattering of competitive games here in the last few years. The one against New Jersey yesterday was one of them. Uh, but uh, I think this game right now is a little more nip and tuck than maybe some thought it, it would be. Second strikeout for a Thunder batter. They are still working on the base down the first baseline. They had to replace one yesterday. If they keep having issues with that. They may just have to go see an, ex kind of an extended break where they go and get another pile on it. Kyle Lewis is due up. We still good on first. Lewis, one okay. run, one out. Here we go, two out. Lefty is running. Set. Ready. Hit. Elevated pitch, the foul straight back. Corey White awaits on deck for the Thunder. And Kyle's power as a lefty is to run right center, but he can go opposite field with power as well. Fouls that one back. Second strike. Kyle started in beat baseball as a switch hitter when he was young. And finally, he was convinced to just pick a side and stick with it. And he's pretty good. Near the top of the league and hitting ever since. Lewis turns on this one. This one well into fair territory. And this one rolling past the 170 foot line. By that time, Lewis had tapped the bag. It is the run scored by Lewis and 7 4 in favor of the Thunder. And that is what we call a no doubt. <laughs> Absolutely tattooed that one. Reynoso, the player closest to it, just could never get there in time by the time that Lewis is going to get to the bag. Kyle Lewis has a man for scoring runs with two outs or in a big situation when they really need it. Of course, he got the time run in the sixth inning of the World Series championship game in 19 that forced it to extra inning. The Corey White. Two plate appearances, two runs scored today. As referenced a home run yesterday. And tried to tear the cover off that swing. He wants it, man. I think he wants another one. He's just raking. And, and you know, you build up that confidence. And it, because that ball sounds like a beach ball coming in. It's really a 16-inch softball. That weighs a pound, so hitting it 170. You gotta, you gotta have some strength to do that. Elevates this one. Middle of the field. Couple ounces and so by the time that ball landed, by the time it hit the ground, he was three like, like one halfway to the base. So that's why getting it in the air is such a key in this sport because you're not you can't make a play on the ball while it's it's hanging up in the air. And so all that does is it gives you a head start down to that base, a jump start on the defense, and Corey scored easy. So run scored, third of the inning. Ed Brown now will come to the plate. Corey's three for three. And had a run scored in the first. Hit the final out of the inning in the second. And sends this one down the right field side, and unfortunately for Ed, sent it right to a field goal. Great play by Jamie Simpson. Able to collect it after just a couple of bounces, and that is the end of the inning. Three runs score in the top of the third. Blackhawks come to bat when we come back. They trail 8-4 here at the Indy Deep Baseball Bonanza.
on the ISC Sports Network. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, program manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read NFB Newsline. Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library. High school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. Today's broadcast on the ISC Sports Network, presented by Kane and Abel Orientation Mobility Services. Take a person's arm and they will lead you around the block. Give a person a cane and it will lead you around the world. 317-213-7031 is their telephone number. Alongside Dave Benny, Greg Rakestraw with you. For joining us for today's championship game. Robert's spot in the lineup. 5, 6, and 1 coming up this time through. You may have heard on the field, Mike, the Thunder defense count off. Now, those numbers are not associated with the zones that the spotters are calling. Those are player numbers for their defense. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eric Rodriguez is the sort of the captain of that. They count off to let so that the other defenders know exactly where where one another are positioned on the field. And they make a lot of noises, the Thunder do. You'll hear them do some cat calls and these squawks and things like that. It sounds like they're goofing off out there. There is a method to that madness. Roberts is swinging a miss. Yep. Yeah. So every time you hear them goofing, it sounds like they're goofing off. They're not. They are communicating with one another. Roberts with contact, and unfortunately for Roberts, much as the same case when the ball was hit at Jamie Simpson the last time. That ball was directed immediately into the path of Tyler Rodriguez. There's one down. This is the time for your Adam ball joke right here. Yeah, right there. I was going to call it an adder ball with uh, with Jamie on that nice play uh, to end the last inning, and that was an Adam ball for sure right there. So one down. This is Darius Sterling. Gordon does an out last time up. This marks the second trip through the lineup for the Austin Blackhawks. Darnell Booker with a fresh supply of beef baseballs. <laughs> Courtesy of the Denver group in Colorado, which uh, is, uh, I guess, offspring, you could say, of the old telecom pioneers back in the old telephone days. And the uh, speaker for the beef baseball is actually made out of uh, old payphone parts. I don't have many payphones oh, around anymore. You don't see those a lot of places. Like That's a good days. age identifier when you see a <laughs> when you see a reference to a payphone, especially if it's in a booth. Ready, set. Swings and misses. But that's what uh, the beat baseball was uh, invented in the 1960s by a gentleman named Charlie Fairbanks out in Colorado, and he worked for the. Uh, Southern Bell or something like that. Foul ball by Sterling, two strikes. Telecom Pioneers, and he kept tinkering with it, tinkering with it until he got it right. And by 1976, there were teams playing from South Dakota to San Francisco to Indianapolis. Foul ball, three strikes. Like I said, the Blackhawks have been around a little bit longer than the Thunder. They, their team got together in the mid-80s and were winning championships by 1992. The Thunder started in the year 2000. Thunder's pitch. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout by a Blackhawks batter today. And there's two down. Well, it's too bad because the uh, Blackhawks defense has been playing well, and so they need to maximize every at bat that they have in this game. Uh, because again, you know the Thunder have the speed advantage; they've got the depth advantage on their roster, and so the Blackhawks can't afford to give the Thunder any free outs. Brandon Chesser at the plate. Run scored last time up. Retired as a put out on the field in inning number one. 
Swing and a miss at the knee-high offering from Hibner. So Chesser made the championship clinching put out in 2014 for Austin. It's the first one they'd won since 98. Elevated ball down the right field side. Takes a couple of bounces, race to get to the ball in the bag. And I believe that would be an out for the Thunder. Have to finish it after, after the break. Brandon's got some stuff in Cooperstown. Not sure. We're going to take another look at this because ball and base should be almost on the exact same shot. Chesser clears the pylon. Miguel Tello into the field for the Thunder. And the ruling is, is that Chesser did beat the play to the bag. Oh, that had to have been a close one. Now. Ordinarily, if the umpire can't tell and he uh, he has to call it one way or another, Ty is supposed to go to the fielder, which is the opposite of traditional baseball. But obviously he thought uh, that Chesser had just beat that one out. Finn with the ground ball up the middle. Finn hustling for the bag and... I think he's safe. Wow. So the top two in the, in the Blackhawks order are doing what we said at the beginning of the game that they had to do, which is to uh, to get runs on the board here. And now we're back in the ball game again. If, if we have any doubt, all you have to do is, is notice the trot that Finn will have going back to home plate. It is a hop, skip, and a jump if he has scored a run. We have seen that now the last two times that he has headed back to the uh, sidelines for the Blackhawks. It's now 8-6. A couple of two out runs there. Just like traditional baseball, beat baseball, those can be big for a team too. Two out runs are good as gold. The second run and three tries for Finn. Courier is 0 for 2. Both outs in the field of play. This is exactly what the Blackhawks needed. You know, stay within striking distance in the front. They're swinging a miss by Courier. They're at the halfway point of this game at the next out. Swing and miss. Well, this game really is moving at a, at a nice good clip, too. We haven't had a lot of delays. We did have one for the base, and just what we thought would happen is happening. Both of these pitchers are pitching quickly. Swing and miss by Perrier. Final strike. Blackhawks trying to avoid sandwiching two runs with two strikeouts. Certainly appears it's going to be the pass by Perrier. Has to swing on this one. Closes that shoulder. Swings, elevates it, middle of the field. Race to get there and out. Yeah. Right out. It's Rodriguez there to get to it just in time. Diving effort by Perry, but could not get to the pylon. And the inning is over. But the Blackhawks do slice the Thunder lead in half through three. Thunder lead at 8 6, the championship game of the Indy Beat Baseball Bonanza. Returns after this on the ISC Sports Network. When a visit to the eye doctor ends in a diagnosis of blindness or visual impairment, Bosma Enterprises is there, providing low and high-tech tools that let adult Hoosiers keep living at home, and training that teaches people with vision loss how to cook meals, travel around their homes and towns, and continue their employment. Because the need for independence never fades, even when the sense of sight does. Bosma Enterprises. To give help or get help, visit bosma.org. The best video on the internet is not the guy of the last week or so. It's the surfing bulldog. Expecto Patronum. Like, you know, Harry Potter. Everybody knows what I'm talking about at home. I'm not Confused. 12. You are one of the most disgusting people I've ever met. You ask. You open up the door. <laughs> Squeaky. Colt's quarterback room is kind of like picking your favorite Ernest movie. They'll all be bad. You have did to. You, did you actually see any of those? You have to go. I, I really was a big Ernest fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. Ernest, yeah. Ernest Goes to Camp was my favorite. You see some of the action around the other fields. And the other teams that participated in this tournament. Chicago Comets, the Gateway Archers. Cleveland Scrappers, the Indy Edge. The Jersey Titans, who put on a tremendous performance yesterday in their battle with the Indy Thunder. And the Atlanta Chaos as well. And we are going to switch out the base at first. So we'll have a momentary delay for that to be the case. 
Well, we have told you about Corey White and his epic blast to center field. White absolutely tattooing one again. This one on the fly, going over the 170 foot mark. And we weren't sure. We were pretty sure it was a home run based on the on our monitor, but we weren't sure that the umpire was sure about it. I found out after the game that it was called a home run immediately, but then when they went to retrieve the ball, the ball was not emitting any sound. It was completely dead. Now, ordinarily, a dead ball would be a replay. However, when a home run is hit, obviously, if it clears that 170 line on the fly, it's outside the field of play, so there's no disadvantage to the defense. The whole purpose of the dead ball rule is so that there's no unfair disadvantage to a defense if the ball stops beeping in mid-play. Well, in this situation, it did do that, but it was a home run, and so the home run took precedence, and he got credit for it, which is two runs instead of one. That's your reward for hitting a home run in beat baseball. Tyler Rodriguez at the plate, and his Swung a couple of times and missed a couple of times. So two strike count. 6 1 2. The lineup due up this time for the Indy Thunder. Rodriguez, ground ball towards the left side. Fielder trying to line it up. Sterling dives past it. And it is claimed, I believe, just in time by Greg Roberts. One away for the Black for the Thunder. Nice job by Greg Roberts. I'm interested in Tyler slipped out of the box or if he got a good start for the base because that seemed like a little slower than normal base run. If that's a normal Tyler Rodriguez base run, he probably beats that out. When that got by Darius, I thought he was going to score there. But Eric Rodriguez. Eric with the strikeout. And out in the field and a run scored. He's had the three true outcomes, as the sabermetricians would say about beat baseball. Swing and miss. Maybe use a run from him here. They really could. I mean, you know, it's like any other sport. If you keep the underdog in the game long enough uh, and let him stick around, you're asking for it. Ground ball that stops before it gets to the 40 foot line. Walking back, walking back. Head back to first and do it again. I have this habit as a broadcaster if a ball hops to home plate, it's a 58 footer, it's a 59 footer. That'd be about a 35-footer off the bat. It stopped shy of the infield line. Right. See the Indianapolis Indians logo on the shoulder of the pitcher in Woodard. Indianapolis Indians Charitable Foundation, one of the supporters of this Indy Thunder program. And we really appreciate them. They've been a, a lot of help to us for the last oh five six years the take on here by Rodriguez Jared needs to get it on top of his bat Eric needs to get one in the air swing and a miss by Rodriguez so full count here. money ball as we call it what it's pitch elevated left side and this will settle into fair territory, and that's going to be a base hit. That's right, baby. He got it on top of his bat, just like I said he needed to, to get that ball in the air and give Eric a start down that base. And really, that's one of those hits. That was a nice air ball there. And that could, we'll see. Let's see if that fires up the rest of this lineup. Now you've got Corey on, Kyle Lewis, and Corey White coming up. Corey on White, much like Rodriguez. One run, one out, one strikeout in today's games, technically one for three. And if you had told me that the top two hitters in the Thunder order were going to be two for six after the first half of this game, I wouldn't have believed you. The run for White come, came back in the first. One of four consecutive batters who all scored for the Thunder. The right out of the shoot. This one elevated towards the right side. This one bounces foul. Good again. Probably a good thing for the Austin Blackhawks. That would have been a nice hit. You know, when they're right-handed hitters and they elevate a ball to the right side, a lot of times when it hit, it will have backspin. And so it's very difficult for fielders because they have to not only anticipate where the ball's going to land by listening to it, but in the air, they also have to anticipate where it's going to bounce once it does. 
Jared Woodard, the pitcher and defensive coordinator for the Indy Thunder. Jared Woodard won his first world championship in 2007 at the age of 16 with a team called the uh, Kansas All-Stars, who had uh, were based out of Topeka. Swing by White, elevated towards center field, and this one almost hits throwing the top of the head. We're not able to get that in time. Again, the elevated ball in this sport is a very good one to have. Two runs scored make it 10 for the Thunder. And it's a sign that Jared is heating up. Now those last two balls were both plenty in the air. And so when the Thunder are on, they get on a roll, that's what they do. Is they put a lot of balls in the air. And I had mentioned uh, Jared Woodard back in 2007, uh, perfect 18-0 season in a championship. Kansas, that team had made the world championship four times previously, kind of like the Buffalo go. Bills, and had never won one. Their pitcher got hurt right before the season. This kid was available and wanted to pitch, and the rest, as they say, is history. He's been building his resume ever since. Lewis fouls this one. Jared is tied by, as far as my research indicates, tied for the youngest person ever inducted into the Beat Baseball Hall of Fame. Tied with Kevin Simpson, the longtime Austin Blackhawks pitcher now with San Antonio. He was 28 when he got Lewis, ground ball, clears the 40 foot line, diving effort to get there. Lewis will get to the bag because, unfortunately, Jamie Simpson and Randy Chesser kind of, kind of played a game you got it in terms of traffic. Ball, make it three in a row now for the Thunder. Their lead grows to five. And that's where communication comes in so key in this sport, to be able to audibly let your teammate know where you are so that there's you know who is going to go for the ball. Because the last thing you want is a collision between the two players. But the second to last thing you want is a ball that's right between them, and they're trying to decide who's going to go and make the play. So Kyle Lewis now with runs and three or four plate appearances, and... Corey White again, just be retired as an out in today's game. That is danger time for the Austin Blackhawks. I'll just say that now. The Thunder look like they're on the verge of going on one of their vintage uh, scoring binges here. Because they can just erupt. I mean, we've seen double digit innings out of them time after time. Checking the wiring on some of the bases. Corey's going to try to keep his perfect tournament going. He's perfect at the play. The June catcher already. This is Corey White. First offer. Low and outside of a lot of those first offerings to Corey White. And the idea is put it in a spot where he can extend the bat as far as possible. Generate the most power on that ball. Yes, but you don't want to be low. You'd rather miss high if you're going to miss anything because you don't want pounding it into the ground. Swing and a miss. Two and other count. Only going to be taken the entire time. Corey White and his brother, and I think the Rodriguez brothers also, we've attended Franklin Central High School down the south side. This one sprayed down the right field line, but will be foul. And White down to a final strike. And I'm seeing a concerted effort off also by Jared and the Thunder hitters to go to right field. Here. There's a lot more balls going to the opposite field. Seems like here in the last inning. Trying to keep it away from maybe Maria Sterling and Brandon Chesser. White has used his pass, so he's got a swing at the next offering from Woodard. Swing and a miss. It's a big strike out there. First time that White has been retired as a put out. Third strikeout by a Thunder batter, and there's two down. Well, I wonder if Ed Brown will get this at bat here. Ed Brown in the lineup. Uh, Adam Rainback, I guess. His hand must have tightened up. 
We saw Demille Wright earlier, number nine, one of their big hitters who uh, is often comes off the bench late in games, but uh, he said he's not going to be playing today. Brown swing, sends it down the right field side, and this one will stay in fair territory, but Simpson able to grab it before Ed can make it to the base, and the inning is over. Great job by Simpson to track that one down in fair play. And great job by the Blackhawks to shut the door after the uh, Thunder had scored a few runs and looked like they were, uh, they were gonna go on a run. All six batters come to the plate. Three runs, three outs. Thunder lead by five, heading to the home half of the fourth. As you're watching the Indy beat baseball bonanza on the ISC Sports Network. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. The drive, the take, foul, and it goes! Lobbing it to the back of the end zone. They're going to say it's a touchdown. Left foot gets through. Goal for Vargas. Hamilton will score. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network is brought to you by Bright Ideas. Your logo on everything under the sun. They're located at 7425 Westfield Boulevard and been a part of our community for nearly 40 years since 1983. Here we go, Thunder, we set. From our broadcast location, just walk to Westfield, hang a left. You'll be there in like three minutes. No problem. Bottom of the fourth. Greg Regstraw, Dave Benny with you. Here on the ISC Here Sports Network. Championship game of the 2021, the 20th annual. Indy beat baseball bonanza. And it just keeps getting better every year. I remember when this started and there were just four teams and uh, we just played a doubleheader down here and we didn't have a championship game. Reynoso sends us down the right field line, but that should turn foul, it does. Darnell Booker and his crew really do a good job. Of course, our sponsors are amazing, they're wonderful. And a lot of people do a lot of work to get this tournament. Uh, and now teams come from all over the country. This is one of the highlights of the season. Everybody wants to come to Indianapolis to play ball. In Chicago, Cleveland, St. Louis, New Jersey, Atlanta. This team from Austin, Texas. And we'll be in Bolingbrook, Illinois next weekend for an eight-team event up there. Which has also run 20 years. It started the same year that the Indy Thunder. So it did. Midwest Beatball really took off in about 2000, 2000. Reynoso swings and misses, two strikes. Reynoso today, runs scored in the second. Actually batted twice in the second inning. And the final out of inning number two. He got nine outs to make up a five-run deficit to the Blackhawks. Reynoso contact to the right side, running towards the third base side. Past one diving fielder, another diving fielder on a somersault. And that is never grabbed before Reynoso can get to the base. It's a leadoff run for the Austin Blackhawks. Uh, Tello pulled that move yesterday at the end of the game, and he made a great play to fin to seal the deal against the Titans. That time, he didn't get it up. Uh, but this is the part of the game where you start seeing Miguel Tello come alive. He's, I call him a closer because he does what he did yesterday in the third game, which is make back, he made the last two putouts of the game. But here, Mariano able to go opposite field and score. And look at this, Greg. Here we go again now. Four-run game. Greg Roberts to the plate. Greg, a run scored back in the second. And the ball to Tyler Rodriguez for a putout to lead off the third. And Blackhawks are hanging around in this thing, and they're well coached and they're well disciplined, and so you know, they're not going to blink because it's the Indy Thunder. Oh, but boy, they've got the last at bats, and they're right here in this game. No out. Last time the Thunder lost was May 3rd of 2019 down in San Antonio to the Jets, 20 to 17. But they they were had a split squad; they didn't have all their players. Roberts elevates it down the left side. 
bang bang play in terms of whether he got the out or got to the base in time. I think he was out. I heard the Thunder bench cheer as if he was out, but I can't swear to it. There's Rodriguez in terms of Eric that was able to get to the ball. Looks like it's going to be a run scored. Wow. Oh my. Sometimes Eric gets the benefit of the doubt just because of just on reputation alone, but uh, that's the second close play I've counted now. Here we go, Thunder, reset. The way of Austin. So 11 8 our score. Still no out. Two runs now matching the two runs scored by the Blackhawks in the last inning in the bottom half of the frame. Here we go. Here's Darius Sterling. Ready, set. Elevates this one. Left side running towards the third base bag in between four fielders. And <laughs> Sterling got there in time, I believe. He scored, and on the Austin bench is fired up. And you know what? And Tim Hibner now is heating up. He's getting first pitch, air ball contact. And hey, they just scored the bottom of their order. Three straight runs to open up the inning. We've got a ball game, folks. Sterling, his first run score of the day. All the players for the Blackhawks, other than Courier, have at least one run. Chesser has scored each of the last two times he's been to the plate. I think everybody has scored for the Thunder, too. Is that right? Except for Tyler Rodriguez. Okay. Still no out. Chesser getting a swing lined up. Here we go. Set. Ready, set. Ground ball contact. Will it reach the 40-foot line? It does. Diving effort to walk and get there. And I believe that's an out. Chester couldn't get to the bag in time, but Eric Rodriguez is able to corral that one. And there's one away. Well, there's been several balls real close to that 40-foot line where fielders have had to charge, and it's been a foot race. Chester also missed the bag on the dive. And our cameras could catch that. That's not good, and that you know that happens in the sport sometimes. But that's a fundamental mistake. You've got to run right through that bag. Going to replace the ball real quick. Get a new piece of gear for Hebner to offer to the next hitter, and Michael Finn. Been after a strikeout and didn't miss the next couple of pitches on a bat number two since that time has had back to back run score. And they, he can bring him within one with a run. First pitch contact towards center field. Ball nestles. That's a diving hit. effort to get him. That's a, that's a run score. That's a good hit. That's a, that's a prototype Mike Finn hit right there. And look at this. We got a one run game. They won the inning. Five batters to the plate, four runners have scored. Scotches his way back to the dugout. It's per year. Thunder reset. Here we go, basically. One out. Bat Manning in his spot. So Edwin Manning will cut to the plate for the first time. He's got a little pop in his bat. Not a ton of speed. He's going to really have to poke it out there, but, uh, but he does have some power at Manning. Swing and a miss by Manning. Well, usually when there's a Manning in Indianapolis, good things happen. <laughs> there was one here for quite a quite a long time, and some good things happened. There's a statue of him, in fact, downtown. I don't know if my fellow Chicagoans would say it was good, though. Manning pops this one up. And the effort to get to the bag. Yeah, that ball was grabbed in time by Rodriguez for out number two. Second put up of the inning for Eric Rodriguez. And Eric's making a lot of plays for the Thunder, but I, I believe that uh, before this game is over, somebody else on the Thunder defense is going to have to step up, whether it's Tello, whether it's Tyler Rodriguez, Kyle Lewis, somebody else is going to have to step up and make plays. Molly Fleming providing assistance for here we go, Edward Thunder, Manning we get back to the sidelines. Here we go, basically. Well, Reynoso's spot due up here for the Blackhawks. Here we go. Set. Set. First pitch swinging. Contact left side in fair territory. And 
Diving effort is made. Catch is made by Rodriguez. Bring it in, Bring it in. We have finished four here in this championship game. Thunder's lead is down to one. Back after this on the ISC Sports Network. When a visit to the eye doctor ends in a diagnosis of blindness or visual impairment, Bosma Enterprises is there, providing low and high tech tools that let adult Hoosiers keep living at home, and training that teaches people with vision loss how to cook meals, travel around their homes and towns, and continue their employment. Because the need for independence never fades, even when the sense of sight does. Bosma Enterprises. To give help or get help, visit bosma.org. Brewer oh. jams, jams it home. That ball wiggles it in, in and into the back of the net. A little fireworks in the first half. Throw it up for Tillman. Whoa. Oh. My goodness. 122-60 for Penn. Oh. What a swim. Six. Six of them. Look at old glory here on the grounds of North Central High School. Ain't she beautiful? 11-10 the score. Thunder lead the Blackhawks in this championship game. 6-1-2 and two to up this time through for the Indy Thunder. Tyler Rodriguez looking for his first run of the game. Eric Rodriguez and Corian White to follow. That's one thing the Thunder pride themselves on is balance up and down the lineup. In 34 World Series games since 2016, every Thunder player has scored in 29 of those 34 games. It's amazing. So Woodard with the first pitch. Rodriguez ground ball contact towards the left side, running down towards third base. Fielder could not get there in time. There is said first run for Tyler Rodriguez who proceeds to not just make contact with the pile of it, like a tackling dummy and carry it with him down the line. Run for the Thunder. You know, Tyler was a wrestler for Franklin Central High School, uh, class of, I believe, 2019, and, uh, and it shows. He, he likes the contact. He has no problem at all tackling that base <laughs> and taking it down. Tremendous camera work by our crew to have that lined up. Here we go. Rodriguez, uh, every player has scored today for the Thunder. There's Eric, who scored each of his last two times up. Ground ball contact left side and got through. Bank -bank 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 get there in time. No, he's safe. He's in there. The Thunder bench is cheering. Rodriguez in the ground ball that crossed both the 40-foot line and then crossed it in fair territory, so the ball ended up in foul territory. It's still a fair ball, and Rodriguez makes it back-to-back -back runs for the Thunder. Oh, those coffin corners. Oh, those balls that sometimes will kick over the 40-foot line and then come back, and that extra few feet may have allowed him to score that run. I did tremendous camera work to show you that angle where we had the frame, both of the ball in play and then Rodriguez heading down the opposite baseline. They hit the pylon before Sterling could corral it. Two up, two in, ground ball, left side, White hustling to it, and I think Sterling got there in time. Despite the great effort of Corian White. First out of the inning. So they're hitting first pitches now, and which is, is putting pressure on the Blackhawks defense, but they're still hitting more balls on the ground than not. And I know that's got to bug Jared. It's a one away. Here's Lewis. Three runs and four plate appearances today. He's another candidate for player of the game, perhaps. And Corey White. Along with Eric Rodriguez now, each with three runs score. First pitch swing, elevates that foul. I don't see many balls hit Lewis's way from a fielding perspective. No, they've stayed away from him. He was busy against New Jersey yesterday in the game we covered, but uh, they've stayed away from him for the most part today. Actually, everything has been in the vicinity of Eric Rodriguez from a fielding perspective. Woodard's pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Towards the third base bag goes Lewis. 
Diving effort by the fielder, and yeah! be close. That was hit hard enough to get through, I think. Yep, that's a run. You can hear the thunder boom come, uh, come through, so. You can hear it all the way from over. It sounds like they've got the first base bench, they first do. base sideline over there. Yep, that's a run. Java Lewis tagging that bag on his way through. Despite Chef Chester or Chester's best efforts. So now the now the pressure back on the Austin defense as the Thunder get a little momentum here. Corey White. Following that, we will see Adam Roden back at least get a swing, looks like, for the Thunder. And Ed Brown's spot in the lineup. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I would have thought maybe if they were going to bring him in, it would be for defense because Ed Brown's in the DH spot. Adam Roden back in. He's, uh, I mean, he's, a, he's no slouch as a hitter, but he's a good defender. Swing so and a miss by Corey White on pitch number one. They may want to save that. They're worried about the hamstring, and they're going to need Adam in, in Bolingbrook next weekend where they're going to see the three Texas powers. Well, two of them for sure. Austin's on the other side of the bracket again. White skies this one. Left center. Ball bounces past the 170 foot line. That is a run for White. That was clubbed. He didn't miss a home run by much. He didn't miss a stitch of that ball either. You could hear it off the bat. It actually had that same sound that his home run ball did yesterday. I don't think it was quite high enough to take it over there, but that was that was rip. That one bounced just to the left of Michael Finn. I would estimate that's about a 165-foot poke on the fly. So Rodenbeck hitting for the first time today. And Brown, after scoring in the first inning, had recorded outs in each of his last three at-bats. The four-run output by the Thunder here in the top of the fifth match, their highest scoring inning of this game. And scored four in the first. Rodenbeck swing. Elevates this one towards center field. He's racing to the third base side. Three Hop fielders out. collide on it, and I believe that's an out for Sterling. Yep. Yeah, they got him. I thought he put enough air onto that ball that maybe he was going to get there, but uh, great, good play by the Austin defense, and they, they've been solid. Look, this Thunder team averages five runs an inning ordinarily. They rarely play, have to play six inning games because they get teams into the mercy room. But they averaged, I think we totaled it up, 27, around 27 runs every six innings because they bat 600. Of course, 27 out of 45 is 600, right? Is my math good? Yeah, that's three out of five. So um, so when you're only when, when four is the maximum number of runs they've scored in an inning, that means the Austin defense is doing a good job here. So Rodriguez gets to bat for a second time this inning. Scored his first run earlier. This one sprayed towards right center field. Fielder able to corral it in time. Nice play. Rodriguez is retired as a put out. That is Reynoso that makes the play. Mariano Reynoso, who's not necessarily known for his defense, made an excellent play to end that inning and to keep them from turning the lineup back to the top. Hang a star on that play by Mariano. The Thunder stretch their lead back to five. Blackhawks come to bat after we come back on the ISC Sports Network. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I am a CFP practitioner, and I happen to be blind. I rely on NFB Newsline to keep me current with Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Brewer jams, jams it home. That ball wiggles it in, in and into the back of the net. A little fireworks in the first half. Throw it up for Tillman. Whoa. My goodness. 122-60 for Penn. Oh, what a swim. Six. Six of them. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network presented by Kane and Abel, Orientation Mobility Services. Take a person's arm and they will lead you around the block. Give a person a cane that will lead you around the world. RB15 at iQuest.net is the email. 
7031 is the telephone number. Great look from behind our home plate camera. One more time, thank you to Robin Lynch, Aaron Van Wolde, Eldon Wheeler, Kevin Rowden, Jordan Shue. Alongside Dave Benning, Greg Rakestraw, Greg Roberts. Fouls that one straight back. It was Mario Contreras. One pitch, one strike. In the bottom half of the fifth. Roberts swings and misses again. Now the count is two strikes, no passes. Yeah, you really do have a great pr production crew here both days at total pros. No contact on swing three. And to a final strike is Roberts. Hebner needs to focus. He needs to put this ball on Roberts' bat. Roberts, two runs in three plate appearances today. Ground ball, left side. And this one directly into the chest of a Thunder fielder. That's how you teach him. You teach him to get the biggest part of your body on the ball. Center mass, stop it, pick it up. Eric Rodriguez. Able to corral that one. Sterling at the plate. Thought that ball might have taken a deflection off the pitcher and hit me there for the only reason why I held up for a moment. And if it does that, even if it crosses the 40-foot line afterwards, that ball is dead and it is a re-pitch. Well, it didn't take enough of a turn. I think it just came close. I just kind of a breeze by Hibner that time. That was the only moment, the only reason for hesitation. But I think Tim Hibner leads the world in hit, hit <laughs> by uh, by batted balls well, in baseball. Let's go back to yesterday's telecast where a pitcher from New Jersey, thankfully, was wearing a helmet. He got his bell rung on, Tw twice for a correct. Twice he had yeah. one, one in the one up in the helmet area, and then once in the small of his back. Yeah, he took two really good line drives. Sterling ground ball left side, fair ball. Sterling racing on the bag at first, but Rodriguez again able to make the play. He has been a magnet today, and there's two away. Well, you just wonder if these fields were running a little faster, like yesterday, if this were a game a little bit later in the day, how many of these balls might have either gotten through or might have been runs because uh, Eric Rodriguez is really dominating on these sort of fields, just dominating. Rodriguez has picked up the last five putouts. For the Thunder. Yeah, he must be. He's got to be getting order. close to double top, digits at this point. you almost had him. Two up and two go. down. Blackhawks have scored on each of the last three innings. They put up a zero on the board in the home half of the first. They use a run from their captain now, Chester, in the worst way. Chester out to Rodriguez last time up. Swing and a miss at the outside offering from Hibner. One strike. Two outs, two runs for Chester today. Swing and a miss, missed over top of that one. Two strikes now. The game ball from the 2014 championship game. Brandon made the last play on that, and it's sitting in Cooperstown. Now, the major League Baseball ball. Contact right side, skies. This one, this one easily in fair territory. Can Tello get there in time? I think he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. It's Tello time, I told you. Three up and three down for the Blackhawks. And the Thunder now a chance to stretch a five-run lead, and Chester immediately offering his congratulations to Tello what he was able to do from a fielding perspective. Back for the sixth inning after this on the ISC Sports Network. When a visit to the eye doctor ends in a diagnosis of blindness or visual impairment, Bosma Enterprises is there, providing low- and high-tech tools that let adult Hoosiers keep living at home, and training that teaches people with vision loss how to cook meals, travel around their homes and towns, and continue their employment. Because the need for independence never fades, even when the sense of sight does. Bosma Enterprises. To give help or get help, visit bosma.org. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. 
Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's line, and we read NFB Newsline. For the second time today, the Blackhawks retired in order, and it happened in the inning where the Thunder stretched their lead from one back to five. Thunder has kind of been, been throwing jabs, not exactly haymakers all day. Just keeping the Blackhawks at bay, and... And it's a five-run lead going to the top of the sixth. And the top of the lineup rolls through in Eric Rodriguez. Momentary delay, either to get fielders set or to allow a few sounds from other fields to subside for a moment. Yeah, so you've got the third, the fifth, and the seventh place game going at the same time as this one. So on field two, oh. you've got New Jersey and Chicago in the third place game. Chicago went really good yesterday, upsetting the Indy Edge. The Edge are in the fifth place game. They have disappointing one and two in their bracket. They're playing Cleveland. And then you've got the two brand new teams in just their second season of existence. St. Louis, the Gateway Archers of St. Louis and the Atlantic Chaos playing for seven. Rodriguez with two swings and two foul balls. So two strikes. Rodriguez with three runs in his last three at-bats after a strikeout and a putout in the second inning. So here in the sixth, it is the sixth time through the order for the Thunder. 15-10, Thunder leading here in the top of the sixth. And we've got some, uh, looks like one of these games is finished because we've got uh, some competitors walking by our booth right here. Yeah, the Atlanta Chaos players are walking by. Went under their breath and they say, hey, what's the score? You working into the play-by-play. -play. That's right. Woodard's pitch. Ground ball left side. This clear the 40-foot mark. This one careens off a fielder, which will allow Rodriguez to score an unfortunate break. For the Blackhawks, they probably had it lined up perhaps a bit better than they thought they did, just couldn't corral it. Rodriguez scores for a fourth consecutive plate appearance. The lead grows to six. Yeah, and that's tough, and if I had to guess, I would say that that ball got on the defender a little bit faster than maybe he expected it to, that he expected it to be a little bit shorter than it was, and he had a tough time handling it. Rodriguez has a lot of speed. Here we go. Eric joins Kyle Lewis and Corey White in the four-run club today for the Thunder. Been a very balanced effort. Here's Corion White. Hit it out to Sterling his last time up. Corion two for five today. One strikeout. And Corion's got a 671 career batting average, so that two for five is, uh, is, is a little bit low for him. You know he'd like to get one here. No out. And Austin really, their, you know, their strength is defense with the roster that they have, and so they can't afford to give up very many runs here. They're down to three outs now when they come up on the bottom of the sixth. Ground ball contact that does not clear the 40-foot mark. So we'll do it again. Now the Indy Thunder, their whole roster is made of people that are either from Indiana or were born uh, or, well, at least in my case, as their media specialist, uh, I live an hour away from the Indiana State Alliance. So they're all local. They practice together all the time. We can adopt you as a Hoosier if you'd like us to. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love Indiana. It's my favorite state to visit. Uh, up there right with, I'd say, Texas, too. Spent a few years playing ball down here. Right the swing. And again, this one is a foul ball. So we'll do an about face and head back to the batter's box. Two strike is the count. Well, they're right on. They're making contact. They just need to make enough contact, make the right kind of contact, put it in play. Uh, but the Thunder, they, they spend a lot of time together off the field. A lot of these, especially the younger players, their starters, uh, it's a very tight-knit group. And as good as they are, they're really humble about it. And they're a very social team. This is a take here the entire way by Corey and White. A little more obvious even than it is in baseball when you see that hitter relax a little bit. Now he swings at this one, skies this one, shallow center. Will it cross the 40-foot line? No. We'll do it again, and then Corian stumbles a bit over the pylon. He seems to be all right. That was a break for Austin, too, because there was no way if that was over the 40-foot line. I don't think there was any way they were no. going to get Kara Corian wide out. Yeah. Corian taking a moment to kind of Get his bearings after he took a tumble, flying down the line on the first base side. 
Well, and remember, you're blindfolded uh, running down that base, and you've got nobody helping you, so you're really on your own. It takes it takes courage to play this sport. It really does. By the way, congrats to the Atlanta Chaos, an 8-3 victory over the Gateway Archers in their final game of the tournament. Congratulations, guys! So that they get they get their first win of the tournament and their second win as a as a team. They got a win last year down in Green uh, Greenwood, Indiana, and so they will finish seventh. Foul ball for White. We'll do it again. Three strikes. He's already used his pass. You see that technique? I love the zooming into the camera there. Put the bat on the plate. Then put your foot against the bat to tell you, okay, this is where I need to stand up, and this is where I need to be lined up. This one almost clipped Woodard. Back up the middle. Fielder kicks it. Can he get it in time? Yes, he does. Out, that's Chester. I tell you what, Woodard, Jared's probably wishing he had gotten in the way of that one, but his athleticism allows him to dodge some balls that maybe some other pitchers wouldn't, and that time it uh, it bit him as it, uh, and you're supposed to. I mean, you know, you're supposed to make an effort to get out of the way, and he did, but now that's a put out and a big one for Austin. That would be kick, save, and a beauty from Chester. And you see him completely sprung, put those legs out just to block the ball and able to quickly corral it. Well done by Chester. Chester's a tough customer, man. Anything it takes to get it done, he'll stop it with his face if he has to. Here's Kyle Lewis. He has scored in his each of his last three at bats. This one. Letter high that was popped up. First strike has gone by the board. Three and four hitters have combined for eight of the 16 runs for the Indy Thunder today. Set, ready, hit. Missed by Lewis. Looking ahead for the Blackhawks, two, three, and four. The players do up next time through. So you'll have Finn, who's had some success. Lewis, round ball, clears the 40-foot mark. Fielder, can he get there in time? Yes. Made the instinctive he. That's Jamie Simpson. Simpson with the grab, and there's two down. Great play by Jamie. Just had a couple of putouts. Jamie's in the having game. a good game yep. today. I'm gonna have to tell her that after the game. Uh, and again, you know, her uh, her husband is Wayne, who is a uh, he's a Hall of Famer, an all-time great in the sport, and then. Uh, her brother-in-law is Kevin Simpson, uh, who was uh, who's pitching in San Antonio, an elite pitcher in the league. So a lot of uh, a lot of history with the Simpson family in beat baseball and the Woodard family. Jared's father, Clinton, is a Hall of Famer as well, and he's a reserve on this team, on the Thunder team. Corey White swinging, sprays this one foul down the right field line, which is the second time that Lewis was retired as an out today. One -oh, one -oh. Corey getting lined up. Not surprising he and Corey and have the same routine in terms of lay the bat at the edge of home plate, put my foot up against the bat. This is where I need to be. Rodenbeck awaits on deck if it gets to him. White just missed a two-run blast his last time up. And there's a lot of brotherly competition between the White brothers. They'll, they'll argue about who's the fastest to the base. They'll even race sometimes. They're both studs, though. That's the bottom line. Come on, for the Two strikes. Here we go. Counts 2-0. Two again. Everybody lined up properly. Now, now we're ready to go. Ah, truck. See, now that's that vehicular noise, and they will do that. They don't want the defense to be disadvantaged. So if there's uh, yeah, ambient noise, planes, trucks, noise. With that, White sends one down the right field line and elevates it. And simply put, with the speed of White, none of the Thunder or Blackhawk players were going to get there in time. And 
That is run number five for Corey White today. Corey, Corey White's just percolating at the plate right now. Him and Jared, I mean, he did have the one strikeout, but other than that, they've been solid contact and scores, and he's running straight bases. He's just so locked in right now. I think he likes uh, uh, being on television. So a pair of insurance runs here for the Thunder as their lead grows to seven in the top of the sixth. Here we go. Look back last time, put out to Darius Sterling. His first plate appearance of the game. Rodenbeck, a former Austin Blackhawk. That's who he came up with. He was working down there. He's from Indianapolis, but he has, was working, going to school down there. Ground ball up the middle, and Eddie Sterling got to that in time, just in time before Rodenbeck got the bag. And that is the end of the inning. So we go to the bottom half of the sixth. The Blackhawks have three outs to score seven runs. Or this Bonanza championship goes to the home team, the Indy Thunder. Back after this on the ISC Sports Network. When a visit to the eye doctor ends in a diagnosis of blindness or visual impairment, Bosma Enterprises is there, providing low and high tech tools that let adult Hoosiers keep living at home, and training that teaches people with vision loss how to cook meals, travel around their homes and towns, and continue their employment. Because the need for independence never fades, even when the sense of sight does. Bosma Enterprises. To give help or get help, visit bosma.org. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network, presented in part by Bright Ideas. Your logo on everything under the sun. 7425 Westfield Boulevard, been a part of the Indianapolis and Broaderville community since 1983. Talking to Darnell Booker before the game, he said yesterday the jersey said Broad Ripple. We were those were what we call the village jerseys, representing the home base. Well, a lot of the Thunder sponsors make way, make are from Broad Ripple, and uh, of course that's that's Booker's neighborhood. He often jokes about being the mayor of Broad Ripple because he's lived there at least since I don't know, 25 years or so. There's no doubt about that. And so uh, to show our appreciation to the village of uh, the, that neighborhood and the sponsors, we put on uh, one of our jerseys. But Finn will lead things off here for the Blackhawks. Two, three, and four. And they've got to score seven. Yeah, look, they've got a hill to climb. There's no doubt about it. But no matter what happens here, they've got to be proud of it. Here we go, Thunder, reset. All right. They've got to be proud of uh, what they've uh, done, accomplished here in this tournament. Here are those that donate their time to give back in terms of we've referenced Darnell Booker. We've talked about the pitcher and Jared Woodard, but so many other folks that help out to assist to make this possible. Ron Brown, Dave Taylor, Mariah Woodard, reference Lisa Gilchrist a couple of times, Casey Scroggum, Megan Pedigo, Raiden Rodriguez over against the catcher today, and Avery Hunsaker. Finn pops this one up, and it will not get past the 40-foot mark. But he'll do it again. And then on top of the volunteers that you see on the rosters that are team volunteers, you've also got the umpires and the scorekeepers and the statisticians uh, and the people that help just uh, that help Navigate for the uh, for people who are blind and visually impaired. Help them get around this big park. It's a huge game. Scorekeepers for the tournament: Barb Weston, Ronnie Higdon, Linda Skaggs, and Dan Trap Hagen. Our officials: Jason Price, Kevin Johnson, David Roberf, Mary Taylor, Johnny Harper, Joe Fredwell, and. It. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without it. Finn getting lined up. Yeah, can we get third one more time? Yeah, go. Tim Hemder has been known throughout his career for pitching comeback games. Let's see if he can do it here. Ground ball does cross the 40 foot mark, but that ball is corralled. Great dive and effort in the field by Corian White. There's one away. So Corian comes up from that short right field position to make that play. Corian hadn't seen a whole lot of work over on that right side as the Blackhawks have really been pounding to left field today. And Corian was up to the task there. They're down to two outs now. Well, frankly, from a fielding perspective, that's the first time we've called Corian's name the entire day. Yeah, they just haven't gone to the opposite field very often here, the Blackhawks have. So here is Edwin Manning. Added in per year spot last time through the lineup. Trying to put out to Eric Rodriguez. It's going to be missed by Manning. 
Uh, the Blackhawks will be in Chicago. They're traveling back-to-back -back weekends out of Texas to the Midwest. They'll be at Bowling Green. Swing and a miss. Two strikes. A tournament just like this one. Three games on Saturday and then play some games on Sunday. And with the take, this is pass. Pippers next pitch. Contact made, elevated left side. Two fielders trying to track it down. Rodriguez sliding effort. Can he get there? Lewis, not in time. A run for the Blackhawks. Nice hit by Ed Manning. And, and like I say, he doesn't have the most speed in the world anymore. So that's what he's got to do is he's got to be able to hit the ball hard enough. And he did there. So that's one back for them. Able to place that ball perfectly between Rodriguez and Lewis. And I was talking about last week or next weekend's tournament. If I could uh, give a shout out real quick, that most of those games uh, for those who follow beat baseball, who are interested in following beat baseball, most of those games are going to be streamed live in the Beat Ball Nation social media group, Facebook Live. It's the biggest online community of uh, beat baseball in the world. We've got over 1,200 members. And uh, so if you want to follow the action, sign up. It's free and easy. Sign up and join Beatball Nation, and the action will get going at 8 o'clock Central Time next weekend, Saturday. Great hey. Noso. Fouls that one. Second strike. Noso, two runs and two outs in today's game. Reynoso asks for the assistance from an alignment standpoint from Mario Contreras, the catcher. Reynoso's healthy now, and he's hitting the ball better now. He was uh, he had a shoulder injury a couple of years ago that was really hampering him. It looks like he's shaking that off. Low hands for the swing. And this one sent towards the left side. And this one will be corralled. Tyler Rodriguez with the play. Reynoso goes flying through the pylon. It's not shortchanged for effort on that one. The Blackhawks are down to a final out. And, you know, that's the story of the game, and really that's the story of the Austin Blackhawks over the last few seasons. A lot of effort. I mean, they make up for their lack of depth on their roster uh, with effort. They, they go all out on every play, uh, and it shows. And they so while they're not perennial champions anymore like they once were, they are still a top five, top six team in this league, and they've, gone, they've played the Indy Thunder very competitively today. So Greg Roberts now. Roberts, two outs, two runs. Scored the second and the fourth. Contact made, but foul variety. Strike one. You see Tim Hibner still with the strong cadence and the strong command on the mound. He's going to pitch until they tell him the game's over. He probably doesn't even know the score. Swing and a miss. A knee high offering. Two strikes. The top two teams in the country, as ranked by Beatball Nation, will play next Saturday when the Thunder and the San Antonio Jets hook up. Swing by Roberts, down to a final strike. Let's see if he's taking here. I believe that is the two o'clock game coming up next Saturday. Jets and Thunder. Roberts swings, elevates this one. Will it cross the 40-foot mark? This might do it. And that's your ball. Game. Out. Got it. Corian White able to grab it. Ball literally landed on the 40-foot line. Great hustle by Roberts diving to the pylon. But this game is over. And the beat ball bonanza has been claimed by the Indy Thunder. Arnell Booker's squad wins it 17-11. to We'll take this quick timeout. We'll come back with our post-game show as you are watching this event on the ISC Sports Network. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read NFB Newsline. 
Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to cook meals safely. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to continue their employment. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Brewer oh. jams it home. That ball wiggles it in, in and into the back of the net. A little fireworks in the first half. Throw it up for Tillman. Oh, my goodness. 122-60 for Penn. Oh, what a swim. Six. Six of them. Again, an absolute pleasure to be here on this Sunday morning. The Thunder claim another championship. Winning the 20th playing of this beat baseball bonanza. The Blackhawks gave him a great battle. 17 to 11. The final score, Greg Rakestraw, Dave Benning with you. Dave, your thoughts on the Indy Thunder adding to their expansive trophy case. Well, the Thunder have coined this season the drive for five, and it was cut short last year, of course, because of the pandemic, and I'd say the drive for five is off to a pretty good start. The Thunder ex were expected. They were the favorite to win this tournament. That's their, this is their home tournament. They've now won it six years in a row, and, uh, and they played... They played reasonably well. Now, I think that there's going to be definitely some things that Jared and Booker are going to want to work on ahead of this tournament next weekend in Bolingbrook, where you're going to have six of the top eight teams are going to be competing in that event. So it's really a precursor to the World Series. But good start for the Thunder. They're 4-0, and they have matched their longest winning streak in team history at 35. So we started the dynasty with a 35-game winning streak, and now they've got another 35-game winning streak dating back to May of 2019. For a second day in a row, we are joined by both Corey White and Eric Rodriguez on the post-game show. Corey, we'll start with you. Five runs in six plate appearances and nearly another home run today. <laughs> your thoughts about your team claiming this championship this weekend? Oh, man, we did great. I'm so proud of us. Um, we got out here and we played our heart out um, and got the dub. <laughs> Eric, your defense was absolutely spectacular today. Thoughts about what you're able to do from that perspective? Uh, well, I thought we did pretty good. Uh, we didn't miss too many balls that we were supposed to pick up. Uh, definitely on the hitting side, I think we could get the ball in the air a little bit more, but I think all in all, you can't be mad at a win. Corey, your thoughts about what you and Corian do from a friendly sibling rivalry to push each other out there to be better on the field? Uh -huh. Corey, I tell me all the time, I'm gonna be better than you one day. But I tell him, uh, you got, you got, you got to put your heart into it, bro. I've been doing this since I was 14, but you know, man, it's fun. It's a fun sport. We out here all to have fun. Eric, kind of walk us through kind of your mindset again, because you were making play after play defensively. What do you kind of go through? The process you go through to make as many plays as you do on the field. Well, I don't even think about it that way. I just play for the team. I like these are my guys. We've uh, won four championships at, up until this point, and I just have fun when I'm out there. If that's what happens, it's what happens. <laughs> Eric, as a player leader for this team, uh, is there anything that you think more than uh, anything else you need to work on uh, ahead of this uh, tough tournament in Bolingbrook next weekend? How do you feel about the Thunder's overall performance at this tournament? Well, I thought we did pretty good. Maybe uh, get a little bit better in the communication uh, side of things in the field, but I actually felt pretty good about this weekend for it being our first outing of the season. All right. And Corey, so no home run today, uh, but an a bunch of big hits again. I guess I'll just ask you again, does it just pump you up uh, to uh, to be covered by ISC, or is it a North Central High School thing? Because you seem to, sh to shine a little bit brighter uh, on this field in this game. I like big games. I like being on TV. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just fun, dude. I, I don't even know what to say. I get out there and play and Wait, give you, it my all. <laughs> you guys are incredible. You're phenomenal, and you make us very proud. Guys, congratulations. Let's go enjoy it. Thanks for the time, right. and uh, best of luck in the upcoming World Series. Again, uh, joining us from the Indy Thunder, both Eric Rodriguez and Corey White. And can we focus kind of more on Eric's defense? He did score runs the last four times he was at the plate as well. Darnell Booker now is getting ready to join us here coming up in just a matter of moments. Again, his team winners today by a score of 17 to 11.
And, and Buck's got to make sure he looks good before he gets on camera. Making sure everything is taken care of for Darnell. Uh, we'll get him on coming up in just a matter of moments. Uh, Greg Rakestraw, Dave Benning with you. So looking ahead, uh, Greg, to the rest of the Thunder season, they will have a tournament eight-team event in Bolingbrook outside of Chicago. That's the, sort of the southwest suburbs off of right off of I-55. That'll be next Saturday and Sunday. Uh, then they'll have a week of practice, uh, and then... Uh, the two weeks after that, there will be uh, the tournament in Ames, Iowa. That's an eight-team event. Uh, and then you've got Fourth of July weekend. And then the weekend after that, the weekend of the 10th and 11th there is, of July, there's a four-team tournament in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, right outside the U of I. Uh, and then you're getting ready for the uh, Beat Baseball World Series in Wichita, Kansas, which is a week-long event the last week of July. And it looks like there may be 16 16, maybe as many as 18 teams at that event. So that's their schedule leading up to the World Series. And then it looks like there may even be some fall ball. I'm hearing plans for a tournament in St. Louis, a tournament down in Greenwood, Indiana, like they did last year, and possibly one on the East Coast later on in September. And with that, Darnell is ready for us now. Coach, congratulations. Your thoughts about your team's performance this weekend? Uh, well done by players. We put in a lot of work starting in January with our indoor, just nothing but hitting for 12 weeks, and then we're outside and we do the, we put it all together with our defense and our base running. But uh, today was a, 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 a test for the Austin Blackhawks and a, a well played game. And uh, we made plays when we had to. Um, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. Um, so I say, you know, uh, it was a job well done by the players and our coaching staff and my coaching staff. Well, in addition to worrying about your own team, obviously you're a big part of putting this event on on a yearly basis. Talk about the effort it takes from so many folks to make this tournament go so successfully. Just behind the scenes work with our volunteers and our sponsorships and uh, and we're you know, just creating those partners and just thankful to North Central High School for uh, allowing us to play in their facilities and uh, it's just uh, an honor, but like I said, it's a passion of mine. Uh, I can't believe it's been 20 years and I'm still doing this, but I love it and this passion. I just love uh, just helping blind and visually impaired athletes and then our volunteers and our sponsorships are behind us. And uh, we're just blessed in, in the city, you know, in the city, Greg, with, with a lot of sports, amateur sports, professional sports that uh, they turn out and then they help out. And uh, it's just it's just behind the scenes. I just thank everybody behind the scenes. It was just a great weekend weather-wise. It was just perfect. Booker, uh, when viewers watch the Indy Thunder play, they see a very organized, well-oiled machine, particularly defensively. Can you talk a little bit about how often these these players work together and the fact that they are they're all local talent that's uh, from the state of Indiana? That's our philosophy. Um, we're Indiana's team. We recruit all over the state of Indiana. And 98% uh, of our roster is from the state of Indiana. And that's what it is, the chemistry together where we, we everybody knows each other on the field. And, you know, we're bond off the field. But just working together and having that chemistry where we can get together and practice, that's really, really important for our organization. And uh, like, like I said, that's just crucial. When you have chemistry and you know where everybody is on the field as players and the spotters put you in the right position, it's just that's just real key in our organization, just the chemistry and the philosophy and recruiting within our own state of Indiana. So you have a dynasty team, obviously, four straight world championships, and now, what, five, or if we count last year, this would be six straight Indy Thunder uh, tournament uh, bonanza championships. What, how, is it difficult as a coach to keep the team motivated and to keep their eye on the prize so that they don't get complacent? What's the secret to keeping these guys hungry in the midst of all of this success? I always just tell them we always have things to work on and we can't rest on our laurels. And um, we just got to, you know, just, we know other teams are working and we can't rest on our laurels and we can't take anything for granted and we just get out there and work on our craft. Darnell, it's a pleasure to be here, buddy. Thanks for having our ISC Sports Network cameras here. Best of luck the rest of the season in the upcoming World Series. Thanks for ISC for being a, a partner and being hopefully on board with us and we appreciate ISC covering our event. Thank you. got you. it. Darnell Booker again joining us. Today, time for us to wrap up our broadcast. Final thoughts, not just on today, but this weekend in total. Well, first of all, I want to say that it was a privilege to call a game with yourself and Derek Schultz. You've got a, a great crew back here. Uh, 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 absolutely professional. Top of the line. Uh, and uh, 
It, this was a great tournament and a great event. Let's see if this is a kickstart to bigger and better things for the Indy Thunder this season. Thanks for joining us this weekend for the Indy Beat Baseball Bonanza. Been watching on the ISC Sports Network. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to cook meals safely. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired. Bosma Enterprises gives Hoosiers with vision loss the tools and training they need to continue their employment. To give help or get help, visit Bosma.org. Bosma Enterprises, visionary solutions for the blind and visually impaired.